We are Makilala TV, the first Filipino-American TV talk show in the New York metro area. Get to know us as we talk to the community leaders, innovators, advocates, and emerging artists who affect Filipino-American life. Welcome to Makilala. I'm Christina Pastor. I am the mother of a gay daughter. For the longest time, I didn't know what that meant, being a mother to a lesbian daughter. All I know is that when Diana came out to me about a decade ago, I was gripped with fear that my daughter will be ridiculed, that she will be discriminated, and that she will be the target of bias based on gender. As a mother, you don't want any of that on your children. My daughter has dismissed my fears and said she's okay. I am happy to hear that. My daughter and I never had a serious conversation about gender. Today's episode is a deeply personal one. Makilala invited two of the prominent queer leaders in the community who will help us understand what it means to be born female and masculine presenting. Marianne Ubaldo, to my right, is also known as Pandai Banale, is a jewelry artist, an activist, a filmmaker, and an organizer of the first Filipino lesbian group in New York in the 1990s. Rio Ortiz, to my left, works with Damayan migrant workers as a case manager and lead organizer. Jen, Rochelle, and I welcome Pandai and Ria to Makilala. Welcome. Hello. So uh, first, uh, Pandai, let's clarify some terms, okay? How, uh, how do you identify? I identify myself as queer, mm -hmm. gay, dyke, <laughs> and lesbian. <laughs> and lesbian. And what about Ria? Um, I identify as queer immigrant Filipina butch. And also, I should say, as a disclaimer, that I and Anne, we don't aim to represent um, uh, all queer penis because mm -hmm. there are so I it's it's a spectrum, it's a spectrum right? yeah. yeah so we can only talk about our own personal experiences mm -hmm. and the experience of our community so um, Pandai how do you uh, tell us about your coming out story I came out actually twice that's why that's yeah, what I heard first in the Philippines when I wanted to live with my girlfriend my mm -hmm. parents said no so it never happened <laughs> oh wow <laughs> how old were you then I was I think 28 mm -hmm. And then I, I came to the United States and we formed a Filipina uh, lesbian group called mm -hmm. Kilowin Collectivo in 1994. Mm -hmm. And I joined them and I, I came out in the Filipinas magazine declaring that I was lesbian, lesbian and talking about the sound of silence, that we have a silent voice. So. so when you came out the first time in the Philippines, what was the reaction of your parents? Well, they know, but you can't really talk about it. And if you tell them up front, it's like, wow, it's really shocking. You liberate mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. you're happy, but they're, they're not happy, the, you they're know? They're not happy, yeah. You have to give time. That's right. Ria, tell us about that nice uh, experience you had coming out in the U.S. Yes. Um, so I also came out twice. Mm -hmm. I knew that I was different when I was young because I started crushing on my um, kindergarten teacher when I was five. Oh. Yes. <laughs> um, and I remember this uh, photo of me holding her hand and, you know, like really feeling something. Okay. And then, um, so I knew I was uh, different and queer Does when I was... Does the teacher know? I don't think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think she wouldn't expect that from a five-year-old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you came out. Yes. So uh, I, I identify as a lesbian mm -hmm. growing up in the Philippines. And then when I came here, I was actually very afraid of uh, meeting my mother. So I immigrated here in June 2000, you know, because we've been separated. Oh. And I didn't want her to feel like she failed because I became queer. Mm -hmm. um, so I started... Um, becoming more feminine mm -hmm. I you know I brought uh, this uh, baby tees you know uh, <laughs> my hair was <laughs> longer, longer yeah, yeah. I started acting more feminine mm -hmm. but I think she knew I have a quick question though um, my my child just came out three weeks ago mm -hmm. okay. and there were no signs I don't know if gonna your child one of my kid, um, oh. my 27 year old son, mm -hmm. um, just came out and he, he told us that he's oh, transgender. Oh, okay. 
okay. and um, there are no signs, mm -hmm. there are no things. And, yeah. and you said that, I don't even imagine how you guys go through what you went through, mm -hmm. but as a mother, you always want, you love them unconditionally. That's right. That's and right yes. But then you have all these emotions. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's like you're grieving, but it, grieving, I heard, is not a right term because you didn't lose somebody, you gained someone. Mm -hmm. But like, I went through the process, the denial, anger, bargaining, um, yeah. um, depression. I went acceptance. through that process too. Yeah. And I don't know how long it takes. Mm -hmm. And my concern is like your concern. Mm -hmm. I don't know what my son would be like yeah. out there. <laughs> I mean, life on itself, on, mm -hmm. a, on a normal person is it's difficult. difficult yeah. But with your son being different, oh my god, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, okay. yeah. with your son being different, mm -hmm. you had another worry. Yeah. So all I could pray is that, that I always said, if you knew me from, from, big, from the get-go, it's like, mm -hmm. I, I tell my kids, you have to be true, be kind, and do things that tickle your heart. Mm -hmm. But my version of happiness may not be the same version of yours. Yeah. So, I mean, I know, it, uh, as do you understand that it's it's difficult it's mm -hmm. it's painful and but m mothers love their kids family love their kids i mean i don't care what people say the mm -hmm. main thing is that your child will be happy so uh, pandai would you like to address that how did your mother for example uh, react when i really told it to her face and and my sister faxed the article she uh -huh. didn't talk to me for one year Mm, and wow. then my older sister also did. I talked to her every week. She didn't want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. oh so I gosh. gave them time. And then one day I called my mom. I said, Ma. And then she said, Oh, bucket. <laughs> she oh, said okay. like that, you know. That's how she my mom answers me like, every day. Bucket. She's in the Philippines. She's yeah, in the Philippines. In the okay. Philippines. <laughs> and then later on, after one year, she talked. You just have to give them time. Yeah, I think so. And too. all I wanted was support. I mean, mm -hmm. what was more yeah, important to me was family yeah, support. But, uh, mm -hmm. how, how did, how did mm -hmm. your parents? How did how did you cope? I yeah. I my husband and I we cried for several weeks. Okay. We were just in bed crying. Okay. <laughs> and my yeah, I think it was harder on my husband because he's the male. You know, he's the father of the family. He felt it was was it a failure on my part? Mm. Was I too strict? Mm. Yeah, like other other, mm. other members of the family yeah. say like mm. kind of blame your parenting you skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ria, yeah. what do you think? Should we um. Well, we I, I know we're not to blame. I, yes, I yes. know eventually. Um, and, and I know that I know that I'm going through this, but I'm, I've told my son I couldn't even imagine what you guys are going through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and I know there's hope for that the life will be easier mm -hmm. and different paths. So that's why this this is really important. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, first, congratulations mm -hmm. with having a trans child, um, and uh, I assume. It's, I think it's okay to grieve, you know, for the parents, the mm -hmm. same way that it's okay for my mother, you know, to grieve. Uh, there should, you know, we should, you know, uh, the parents should give themselves space for the grieving part. So as your child is transi transitioning, Transition, you're yeah. also transitioning right. with them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So in my case, um, well, I grew up in the Philippines. I grew up in Manila. And I really, I, I, the message that I got growing up was that I wasn't supposed to exist. You know, my I got that message from my family, mm -hmm. you know, from the church, from school, oh. right? You know, the message that I got that, you know, being queer or gays and lesbians are, you know, it's a sin, right? And as a sinner, you're not supposed to exist. Yeah, but right? well, that was about um, several years ago. Yes. But I we think we don't think different. that way anymore. Yes. I mean, there's a certain kind of openness. I was going to say, I was like, yeah. There, uh, there is an openness, openness, but yeah. it's, there's still a lot of people that feel like that way. You worry mm -hmm. about the simple mm -hmm. things, like, like when you go to the grocery store, do they yeah. look at you? When you go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. like which ones? That's like right. You have stories. Those you have shared those experiences. Yeah. You have stories the about The prejudices that. of uh, tell I us think why. Um, like going to the bathroom. Yeah. Simple as going to the bathroom. So I just go, and then when I'm washing my hand, then uh, the lady said, like, she goes to the door and, and sees if she went <laughs> to the right, <laughs> to the bathroom. right bathroom. Yeah. And then she looks for me from head to toe. Uh -huh. Or sometimes when I enter the bathroom, say, over there. Uh -huh. I said, no, over here. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel that you have to explain why you're do, what no, you're doing I there? Just, it's oh, funny, okay. you know. I don't take it serious, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ri? Ri, I think you have to wait for other people to leave, right? <laughs> Before you enter yes. a so public restroom. I think, especially you know, in under Trump, I, mm -hmm. I've uh, experienced extra anxiety and stress. So you've actually felt a difference oh, yeah, these past few years. Yeah, when he won. To be honest, when he won, I thought that I was just gonna live 
for five years with you know white supremacy, mm -hmm. homophobia, mm -hmm. heterosexism, right? And I've experienced, you know, firsthand threats of violence and actual violence, you know, actual on the subway. Violence. Oh, yes. on the subway? Yeah, okay. for being brown, for mm -hmm. being a woman, and being masculine presented. Can you what, what tell us, like, do? one yeah. story about a subway sure. encounter? Sure, yes. It actually just appeared on my Facebook feed, you know, the mm -hmm. reminders. So about uh, a couple of uh, years ago, um, four young men, you know, they surrounded me. You know, I, because I said they were saying something to the older Latina woman, you know, on my side. And then I said something like, stop bothering her. And then they all kind of ganged up on oh, me. Okay, but yeah. I knew they were doing that because I was, you know, queer, I'm brown, I'm a woman. And I really felt that, you know, I was... Where were you? Was it... Was on the subway. Oh, okay, I was yeah. on the subway, on the E-train, on my way to work. And I really felt threatened. You know, I was holding the keys, you know, in my pocket. I mean... Just in case. Well, it's not like it's going to protect me, <laughs> but <laughs> it felt secure. Yeah, so nothing good. happened. They got off on the next stop. Mm -hmm. But those, you know, that's the reality of queer people. That's right. And you would think that being in America, it sort of gives you a feeling of liberation, you know, because you can be who you want to be, unlike if you were in the Philippines. It's actually well, interesting because when I was talking, this is totally new to me, I was talking to my, my, my family in the Philippines, and they were more open to it because there are more people who are out in the Philippines as opposed to one in, in the U.S., is that true? Filipino I, I don't think so. I think they are more discriminatory back home, right? Well, I mean, I'm I think talking it's about improving. Now. I think like gay men are more out, more in media, mm. and the women are coming out slowly. They're having a voice. I think it, is, it yeah. is about media. It's about yeah. presenta representation. If we have more stories like yours mm -hmm. and others, I feel like that, yeah, your story is just your personal, but it also gives light to the viewers right. and your followers yeah, right. and say, mm -hmm. there, there's someone that looks like me. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, we need the support of the community. Yeah. That's so important. So now, in terms of community, I see that you have a pin here. It says Stonewall 25, June 26, 94. We are all familiar with something about the Stonewall riots. Um, do you know any Filipinas that were involved in that? Yes, in that we, we had the group, uh, we were forming a group, Kilowin Collectible. Like I said, it was the first Filipina uh, organization in the USA. Mm -hmm. uh, when we joined that march, we saw uh, Filipina lesbians from Toronto. They had their mm -hmm. own group <laughs> named Babaylan. Mm -hmm. And saw also some Filipina lesbians from Davao. I said, wow, we're all in GabNet. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we... we we were inspired, you know, to start our own group. And, and we you, were a lot happier. Did you create a um, yeah. community of yes, Filipino lesbians? Yes, we did. We did. We had are they still around right now? They are, some have moved on. Mm -hmm. And um, we lasted like 10 years. Oh, but uh, when the same-sex marriage was legalized in okay. 1994, mm -hmm. uh, I had some friends and mm -hmm. some of our Kilowin marching mm -hmm. to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Curiously, I'd like yeah, to know. In are 2015, you I mean. Are you in a relationship right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. You are married, right? <laughs> 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 we will not mention the name. <laughs> Ria, are you in a relationship right now? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> this you is like the <laughs> Filipino bachelor. What I are you know, trying right. to do with Christina? Right. No, no, <laughs> no, no, I'm like Christina. My you're question. You're your daughter. Uh, my daughter is in a relationship. She's been with, um, in a relationship for something like five or six years. Mm. It's, uh, she's very happy. They live in Philly. And the girl has uh, children, so she has children. Mm. So You're a I grandma? I <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, I lower. know, right? <laughs> I am a grandma. <laughs> but, um, and my daughter identifies as androgynous lesbian. So mm. she's really dikey, butchy, right? Mm. I don't know if I should have used that word. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the word lesbian appears to have uh, fallen out of favor. How do you explain that? How come don't people don't want to be called lesbians anymore? Well, for me, I, I used to identify as lesbian. Mm -hmm. I think it's really a matter of personal choice, how you identify as. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I identify as queer as because queer, it's yeah. more fluid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think uh, beyond labels, it's really about uh, respecting the rights of queer people. Mm -hmm. right? I feel like uh, there's always stigma in any word, you know, oh, queer, okay. yeah, guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's always celebration in what it is. Mm -hmm. That's true though, when you yeah. said there's always celebration, because yeah. coming out mm -hmm. is such, um, somebody said that it's, it's a strong character for a person to come out. Because yes, it's true. It's, you're defying yes. conventional wisdom and, and tradition that yeah. 
but but you're you're really insisting that this is who I am and mm -hmm. like I I'm very happy with who I am you mm -hmm. know and it's a celebration and I'm not asking anyone everybody to accept me mm -hmm. but number one is my family mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the rest can follow right yeah. so when yeah. a parent comes to you saying that my child appears to be um, questioning uh, his or her gender what advice do you give him or her uh, try to understand your daughter or mm -hmm. your son mm -hmm. um, and um, it's I know it's it's like it's really a process it doesn't happen overnight you know mm -hmm. read upon it maybe um, make friends with other, other queer people yeah. mm -hmm. you know sometimes there are no signs I mean you you would start when you were five right yeah. yes um, I think there may be signs, but they're hidden yeah. because mm -hmm. there's a really strong culture of silence within the Filipino That's family. True. Yeah. Right. Mm. You know, in growing up queer in Manila, it's it's uh, you know, the Philippines is a predominantly Catholic country, mm -hmm. so the parents are you know imposing their beliefs on the children. So yeah. there's a lot of fear, you know, to come mm -hmm. out. So um, that's why it's creating this culture of silence. Mm -hmm. So, um, Rochelle, any yeah, I wanted to ask. Question. Um, your advice to not just parents, but how about the kids? Like, if they are feeling some certain way, like, is there any resources that they can go mm -hmm. to 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 learn more stories or how to transition, or if that's even a mm -hmm. a, a term that's appropriately yeah. used? Yeah, for me, uh, I like I said, I grew up in Manila, and I remember very distinctly when I was 15 years old, you know, on my 15th birthday just crying so hard and praying, God, God, why did you make me this way? Because oh. I felt so alone and isolated. And this was, you know, in the 80s and 80s or 90s, right? And I feel like there's more openness now, but the systems, you know, that keep, that basically oppress queer people are still here, right? So I think support, first and foremost, from the family is very important. Yeah. Like what I would like to hear from my mother Right, whether that's verbal or in writing, is that I don't completely understand what's going on, but I support you. Mm -hmm. There's have one have you heard that, Ria? Not verbally. Not <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jen. Yeah, that's what I told my, my son um, that I'm proud of him and that I'll support him. And I got that from my kids. The kids, I think, the younger generation, you can learn a lot more, <laughs> and they're more like they could understand more. Mm -hmm. Like you said, like mom, that's like one thing that would make him feel that he, he's not alone. It's that you tell them that you're proud of them. That's Maybe right. this, is that why pride came from? Mm -hmm. oh, that's right, okay. that's right. <laughs> it, I, I remember when my daughter was, um, I haven't fully accepted it yet, the concept. <laughs> so she was doing really badly in school. And then when my husband and I decided to verbalize mm -hmm. that we support you, she is, her grades have improved. Mm -hmm. So I said, wow. <laughs> so that's all it needed. It's that's a all very that big needed. Uh, yeah. thing to uh, support. That's right. Really. Like for me, it's like, as long as my parents accept me unconditionally, mm -hmm. that's what matters. And that really, mm -hmm. you know, makes you so happy. And you're, you just feel free. Mm -hmm. They're free and I'm free. And that's it. Mm. So I'm curious about the lifestyle. What is the dating dynamics for Queer people, other than apps. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Grinder? Well, or yes. So <laughs> Anne and I were talking about this. I think dating, queer dating, it may be uh, somewhat different from straight dating. Uh -huh. But I think what's important is there should be it should be fun and mm -hmm. there should be mutual consent, uh -huh. mm -hmm. right? If someone, if the person says no, then no means then no, no yeah. right? You know, because in Filipino culture, no means. You should try harder. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, yes. Filipino oh culture, <laughs> no means yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. No means maybe, uh, yes. So where do, you, uh, where, do you where do you meet? Where, yeah, where do you meet? Yeah, where do you meet? Well, yeah. like I was telling Ria earlier, uh, f before you date any queer people, mm -hmm. you have to say what's your type or who you go yes. for. Oh. Like, right, trans, yeah, lesbian, mm -hmm. dyke. Mm -hmm. So you don't make a mistake that it's not going to happen. Nothing's going to yeah. happen. Mm. So that, that's mm -hmm. important. Yeah. In the Philippines, actually, butches uh, date straight women. Um, yeah, like yeah. all of my oh. exes uh, identified as straight in the as Philippines. Oh, okay. Yeah, so when I came here, I was checking out straight women. They were like, no, 
I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. So now you just have to ask, you know, if they're into queer or butches. So it's actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you ask that question? Yeah, if, if you're, you're at just a, in a party. Yeah, you're at a bar and yeah. you see someone attractive. Will they, will they get the like sense? Will they get a radar sense. or something? Oh. I, I'm, uh, I'm actually um, um, introvert, so I don't approach women. So <laughs> it's strong women approach me. So I like ah. that. <laughs> <laughs> We're that's starting to know your type. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So can lesbians, <laughs> can lesbians be attracted to straight men? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that's why I feel like... There's yeah. fluidity now. That's you that's know, you can I'm slide like here and yeah. you can slide there. Oh. That's why I'm feeling that it's not just like, oh, what you're, what you're in the mood for it, and, and a specific definition of like, oh, lesbian only does this. It is fluid and I think that yes. more people should understand it is part of the spectrum. I think that's why lesbians yes. don't apply anymore. The word lesbians don't apply anymore. What does lesbian actually mean? Um, from my under <laughs> limited <laughs> understanding, <laughs> it's a woman who, who, likes presents, another woman. Uh, who likes another woman, presents himself as male, right? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. No. Yeah. I think there's a, um, I think one, one thing that we have to clarify is that there's a difference between sexual orientation and gender, gender identity. identity. So gender identity is how you present yourself. Like, I can, you can be born a woman and feminine, mm -hmm. right? Or you can be born woman and be masculine presenting like us. Okay. Right? But your sexual orientation is totally different. So, um, I mean, it's usually assumed that if you're butch, you know, you're attracted to um, uh, femmes. Fem, yeah. Yes. But you can also be attracted to other butches, you know, no. or although that's not my personal preference. Uh -huh. uh, but that's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it depends on uh, preference. Is yeah. that why would somebody masculine presenting be attracted to another male? It doesn't connect in my brain? Um, <laughs> I, I think because uh, it's not a box. It's a spectrum, you yeah, know? It's a so spectrum. from left to right, you can go, you know, you can, it's fluid, right? It's not oh. your, uh, I, I, I think that's one of the, uh, I mean, you're already, you already went out of the box from being mm -hmm, straight. Mm -hmm. So why box yourself again? Okay. I mean, sometimes I would meet women, let's say what, 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. They say they're bi, and then you see them, oh, how are you? And then you presume they're still bi. I said, no, I'm trans now. You know, so, now, yeah. you, you know, you just have to go with the flow. I think, and trans I think the yeah. most important yeah. thing is that you respect yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That I think that's the most important thing. That sure, it just changes, but you shouldn't judge somebody because that mm -hmm. they favor a certain way. Is there a community in New York where LGBTQ is a whole group, like, um, like a support group? You are referring to Filipina or Filipina. just uh, everyone? Yeah, in the Philam community. Uh, Philam community or? For now, I don't think so. I think there's yeah. uh, there are pockets of, there's a trans community, I know. There's a gay community. That's right. Oh, by the way, we have yeah. to end. <laughs> we have to end this very enlightening episode. Thank okay. you, uh, Pandai. Thank you, Ria. Can I just make one invitation? Okay, sure. Uh, um, I'm inviting uh, Kilowin uh, sisters, friends, and allies mm -hmm. to join us in the largest Pride Day uh, next year, June 25, to commemorate uh, the 50th Stonewall. Okay. Nice. We will repeat that on Facebook, yes. on, <laughs> on the Makilala page. In the meantime, thank you both. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. That was a very enlightening episode and very informative. And... Um, what I learned from this conversation is that there is so much to learn from the language, terminology, leading to understanding the LGBTQ community and learning to support and connect with them. I'd like to see a time when language becomes familiar. I can, we can begin to speak about being gay without any guilt or awkwardness. In the meantime, before we close, let us listen to a beautiful song from our guest performer, Brian B. Magsayo. The title of the song is OFW, and Brian wrote it and dedicated it to our overseas Filipino workers. Here's YouTube sensation Brian B. Magsayo.
Ikay bayani ng Pinas, di mo ba nahahalata? Di na kailangang patunayan, alam naman naming lahat Na ang mga sakripisyo mo ay sapat Thank you. 